That's all set. All right. Good evening. Uh, welcome to this evening's October 2nd, 2017 public council meeting. Roll call, please. Councilman Cambiris? Here. Councilwoman Peterson? Here. Hey. Councilman Vargo? Here. Deputy Mayor Sakala? Here. Mayor Tanella? Here. Uh, please rise for a flag salute. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. Adequate notice of this meeting was duly provided to the Verona Cedar Grove Times and the Star Ledger by email and published in an annual schedule of meetings uh, dated December 29th, 2016 and January 6th, 2017 and respectfully filed with the Township Clerk and posted on the public bulletin board in the municipal building lobby in accordance with the Open Public Meeting Act. Uh, item 2A, to approval of minutes. Um, to consider approval of minutes of regular public meeting September 11th, 2017. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion? A roll call, please. Councilman Cambiris? Yes. Councilwoman Peterson? Yes. Councilman Vargo? Yes. Deputy Mayor Sakala? Yes. Mayor Tanella? Yes. Item three, public hearing. It's two items. A, to consider adoption of pending ordinance 17815, amending designated redevelopment entity for Cedar Grove Redevelopment Plan for Hilltop Property. Oh, the meeting is now open to the public um, on this item and this item only. Anybody wishing to be heard? On this subject? Yes. Mayor, can you just clarify quickly? Yes. The matter under consideration right now is amending the designation from the Essex County Improvement Authority to the Township of Cedar Grove as the redevelopment entity. Um, we're not yet at the point for a public hearing on a pilot, if that is what the uh, resident is wishing okay. to comment on. Mr. Emmerich, you understand that? If you want to give so just, just, your, just your name and your um, address, Brian as you know. Emmerich, 23 Greendale Road. Go ahead, ask your question, please. The, I understand that it's not appropriate at this time to talk about the transfer of responsibility from the ECIA to Cedar Grove. Is that, is that, did I understand that? Well, I wouldn't call it the transfer of responsibility, but if you want to talk about the township being designated a redevelopment entity, you may do so at this time. Oh, I have, I have no comment on that. Okay. All right. So we, we have another ordinance. Uh, we have another one we're going to pass and you will have the public comment as well too. Why don't you ask your, what, what's your question? If you want to go ahead, answer your question so we can see where it's going to fit in so we can address it for you. Uh, I, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very complicated series of resolutions here. Mm -hmm. And uh, having spent a lot of time reading 108 pages, <laughs> I know to, to a great extent this is a done deal. Um, I'll, I'll make an initial statement, which uh, will be that I, I don't think that the pilot arrangement is a good deal for Cedar Grove, but that, that, that just for the record, um, my, my primary concern, and I have a number of concerns about the ordinance. Um, Mr. Emmer, just the, the ordinance regarding the pilot? Well, there's a couple spots here. The... That down under new business, there, there's, there's something talking about the execution of the developer agreement, item uh, 8E. Right. I, I think may, may, maybe where your question is more pointed is under 3B, where we're going to talk about adoption of the, uh, uh, under the, the, the pilot is a the topic there. Possibly, um, this is just for the transfer of the designation of who the, the redeveloper is going to be. Uh, well, no, the redevelopment entity. Re the redevelopment entity. entity. Going to supervise the redevelopment. Right. For this particular or um, item only, for this 3A. So maybe your question, if it's the only I have no question about it. Okay, so why don't, we, why don't we just move on with this one? You can come back up. Mm -hmm. All right? Thanks, Mr. Emmerich. Anybody else from the public wishing to be heard? Seeing none, I close that portion of the meeting. Is there a motion? Mayor, I move for the adoption of pending ordinance. 
17-815 uh, to be published in the Verona Cedar Grove Times as a past ordinance to take effect as prescribed by law. Is there a second? Second. Any other discussion? A roll call, please. Councilman Cambiris? Yes. Councilman, uh, Councilwoman Peterson? Yes. Councilman Vargo? Yes. Deputy Mayor Sakala? Yes. Mayor Tanella? Yes. Item 3B. To consider a resolution, uh, to consider adoption of pending ordinance 17816, ordinance authorizing tax exemption and pilot for Cedar Grove redevelopment plan, Hilltop property. The meeting is now open uh, to the residents. Anybody wishing to be heard? Mr. Emmage, please. My number is 23 Greendale Road. This, this is where <coughs> the organization is uh, um, confusing. The, uh, the ordinance that you have just referenced, um, 17816? Yes. Okay. Uh, includes a, a statement down in section one, which says, attached here to is the form of exhibit A. So, so my comments deal with exhibit A. Mr. Lezlinski, you see where? Um, That's the pilot agreement. Right. Exhibit a. So, right. Um, does, do you have a question regarding the pilot agreement? Do hmm? you have a question regarding the pilot agreement? The pilot? The pilot agreement is Exhibit A to the order. I, I have a question concerning <laughs> Exhibit A. <laughs> exhibit A is the pilot agreement. So okay. I'm, I'm not quite sure. Do you have a question regarding the content of the pilot? Yes. Agreement? Okay. Could you ask that question? Okay. Okay. <laughs> I have a number of questions, but uh, my primary one deals with Exhibit B of, <laughs> of the pilot agreement on page 6, where it talks about the distribution of the money from the uh, pilot revenue. It says the pilot revenue is paid to the municipality and 5% to the county. Now, my, my question is, why did we not also include a, a percentage of the money to the Cedar Grove Board of Education? We, we're, giving, we're designating 5% to the county. Why not something to the Board of Education? Mm -hmm. Mr. Tucci, you want to address that question? Pilots traditionally, the way they're set up is that 95% goes to the municipality, 5% goes to the County of Essex, and then it's up to the municipality, if they so please, to enter into negotiations for uh, talks with the Board of Education. I believe there was some preliminary talk. I know you haven't been here in a while, but there was some preliminary talk with the Board of Education about a cost per child, how many child are generated, we're going to pay and I'm not speaking, I'm not sure. to put words in the council's mouth, right. but this was just some of the discussion that went on that we were going to give the Board of Education whatever the cost per child based on how many children were generated here so that they had their fair share to support their end. Does that answer your question, Mr. 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 <coughs> Mayor, if I, if I can. Sure, go ahead, Mr. Zelensky. Is, Thanks, Mr. Tucci. A separate agreement will be reached between the township and the Board of Ed regarding any split of pilot revenues, but that has not been finalized yet. I got this one. It has not been finalized yet. We have to enter into the pilot agreement first. It, is it, was it required by law it's that not, we, we not provide 5% five, five to the county, or, or was that negotiated? Yes. No, that's, that's required, by required. Law. required by law. Okay, thank you. Would it not have been possible for the, this board to allocate money in this in this agreement for the Board of Education. Hmm. Uh, let me ask the question, Mr. Linsky. Could it have been possible to do that? Uh, look, anything is possible, but right. it's not the appropriate place for that. <coughs> so, so it could have been possible, Mr. Image, and, and I'll, I'll speak just for myself, because obviously we have a lot of new members on this, um, this council here. 
when this uh, matter was being addressed by the prior council, um, I know myself and um, Councilman Zunick at the time were you know, obviously proponents of just what Mr. Tucci said with regard to making sure that at the appropriate time, based upon our council's advice, that the Board of Ed is going to receive um, um, the, uh, you know, an agreed upon dollar amount between this council and the Board of Ed um, based upon the, the cost per child. Um, I've always felt that way. So what, um, I, with regard, that was always something that we discussed from a prior council um, whenever the issue came up with the Board of Ed, um, that we were going to be fair and sit down with them um, at the appropriate time, which according to our attorney, that hasn't arisen yet, but what it does, um, I would bring up to this council here, and I hope they would support that endeavor that we're gonna sit down with the Board of Ed and make sure that they're they've received their fair share of the pilot money that we receive from this development. Mr. Mayor, if I may. Yes, <coughs> Mr. Bargo. Uh, Mr. Emers, first off, thank you for reading all of that and coming up and asking the question. From what I'm hearing is we're going, to, we're going to work with the Board of Education to make sure they get their fair share based on how many children are generated from that development. So the, the Board of Education will not be left without any of those dollars. So I just want to... I want to thank you for coming up here and asking asking the question, but also want to make sure that you know the Board of Education will get their fair share based on our discussions with them. Well, I, thank you. I hope so. The uh, my opening comment was I thought the pilot agreement was a mistake, and that's one of the reasons because if you didn't have a pilot agreement, this would 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 not be a question. But. You know, it's it's a done deed. Mr. Emmerich, when you say it was a mistake because we're going ahead with the pilot agreement without reaching of, uh, um, an agreement with the Board of Ed? No, no, no. The the, the whole the whole pilot agreement. <coughs> when you when you read the benefits to, to the town of Cedar Grove, mm -hmm. it's <laughs> uh, it's it's not correct. Those aren't those aren't benefits. The, the it says there are benefits in there because we don't have to pay six million dollars for the demolition. Mm -hmm. We Cedar Grove never owned the land. We never had to pay six million dollars for mm -hmm. demolition. Have none of it when they bid on that property. They knew that they had to demolish the buildings. So the amount that they offered for for the purchase. Of that property took into account that they had to spend six million dollars for demolition so you can't turn around and say that oh what this pilot agreement is so good for Cedar Grove because now we don't have to pay six million dollars for demolition I, you know, I have a lot of problems with this thing that's the primary one because it's the biggest one mm -hmm. the, the other benefits for Cedar Grove We had nothing to do with a pilot agreement. That land was going to be developed. And it would provide increased business for Cedar Grove businesses. That, that was going to happen. Wait, are you, I'm sorry, it's just so we don't get off track. When you say that land was going to be developed for commercial purposes? It was going to be developed. I'm not following I, I, I'm sorry. Been, I can't believe I'm up here 30 years later. <laughs> At one point, it was going to be a corporate center. No, I'm aware oh, of the. I'm sorry, I'm aware of the history. I don't want to go into history. I, I, I'm, not, I'm completely aware of the history of it what would, it was would, going to be. Would, it was going to be developed mm -hmm. the way of Danian wanted it. They mm -hmm. wanted it to be a CCR. Right, CCRC. And they changed their mind. Right. And so it was. It was going to be developed, and and, and we'd have an increased residents, and they would provide <coughs> increased business whether or not it was a pilot right that's the point that's my point okay. having said that I, I said i had a number of items on that the uh, the, the next series of questions deals with the uh, athletic field um, so I, I'm, maybe you want to wait, because this one's just dealing with this particular item only, dealing with the pilot. Well, but the, the, way, the, the way this package is organized, right. 
<laughs> you know, I, if, if there's no objection from the council, I don't have a problem addressing all Mr. Emmert's questions now. You, anybody have an objection to that? No. no? So go ahead. If you want to go on to the athletic field, feel free. Is that okay, Mr. Zelinsky? Go ahead. Yes. The, uh, You're uh, talking about the, uh, the athletic field that we've been talking about with the, the developer to build for the township? I believe, yes. Okay. It, the, the ref, there are many references. Page 7, a, a multi-purpose field. Exhibit B, item number three, construct a new ball field. Uh, uh, item, uh, page seven, item eight, we will build a new ball field. Uh, where, where's that ball field going to be? I, I couldn't find it on the map. The ball field's going to be adjacent to what we're... we're we're discussing with the Board of Education. The board, of, the field is going to be adjacent to Panther Park on the Board of Education property. So it will be a Cedar Grove. It'll be a Cedar Grove field, 100%. A condominium project. Cedar Grove field, 100%. I'm happy to hear that. Thank you. Um, hey, next, next item is, again, Exhibit B, page 3. It talks about approval of sanitary sewer. Um, my recollection, when the CCRC was approved by the council. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not. What's that? No, go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. I, I heard. I heard. I no comment. The, uh, uh, Cedar Grove was required. No, no. One, we were a. We were, we were required to provide more water. Mm -hmm. We had a build an extension on Fairview <coughs> Avenue and we had to purchase water rights from the town of Kearney. Now whether that any of that was done in connection with the CCRC, I don't know, was it? Um, Mr. Tucci, can you well, just address that? This that is partly true and partly yeah. in right. Uh, years ago, the township of Cedar Grove had large water losses to our water system. I mean, we had leaks under the ground had nothing to do with the CCRC. And the state of New Jersey uh, required us to have at least enough purchase of water on contract that we were utilizing. So what happened was, and this is oh, probably about 10, 15 years ago, we did have to buy purchase additional water from the township of Kearney. Since then, we have a leak detection system in town. We found out where the major leak was reduced, all our water usage and we haven't had that agreement with Carney probably over the last five years. So we no longer purchase any additional water from Carney. So we right now we contract with two sources that we traditionally have done so for many years. North Jersey Water District, where we get one point eight million gallon one point two million gallons per day as per our consortium agreement. And we get an additional point eight million gallons per day on an as needed basis from the Sake Valley Water Commission. And that satisfies the township needs. Actually, that's a little bit more than what our needs are. But the uh, state always requires you to have a cushion. You just can't purchase the exact amount that you utilize. And that's that's the explanation there. Mr. Tujic, you also do me a favor just for this council's edification. Just speak to the uh, financial benefit of the pri um, the pilot program to the township of Cedar Grove. Well, based on uh, the uh, review that uh, the pilot that was submitted and the review done by Nizavachi and Sons, who was our consultant who did the financial review. They're our auditors, by the way. They did the financial review. The Township of Cedar Grove will be realizing uh, between 3.2 3 to $3.8 million per year from the pilot over the next 30 years. Now, obviously, that 3.2 or to $3.8 million will kick in once the thing is fully developed. You don't get all that well at one time. Right. And once the whole development is fully developed, that's what is projected to be realized by by the township at that point. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Tucci. Go ahead, Mr. Sure. Uh, was, was the water line extended on Fairview? That was a part of the deal. Um, Mr. Tucci, do you want to address that issue as well? well? The, there was always a water line up to the uh, county property. If you go on Fairview Avenue on the, uh, let's see, on the east side, in the vicinity of the Slattery property, there's always been a, a 
Passaic Valley water vault. I believe it's a 12 inch water main there. And that used to feed as a backup the old county properties. That was disconnected when the county demolished and uh, KF Nanian is going to be hooking up to that vault right there and pick up the 12 inch and that's where the water supply is going to come from for that development. Okay. Thank you. Continuing with that general question, sewers. Mm -hmm. Again, going back to the CCRC, see, as, as I recall, Cedar Grove entered into an agreement and we gave up the, what I call the rights to the sewer treatment to Verona. The sewer right, I'm sorry. Sorry? I didn't hear you. Sewer, okay, sewer treatment. I, I didn't hear you, I'm sorry. No, no. Okay. And is that agreement still in place? I and mean, who's, who's going to handle the sewage for this condominium property? Mr. Tucci. When All right. Uh, Mr. Remage is correct in his recollection. Uh, back in the day when the uh, Essex County sewage treatment plant, which is the current site of our Panther Park, was a sewage treatment plant that used to treat the county property. Mm -hmm. When that was discontinued, uh, that sewage was redirected into the Verona sewage treatment plant. Thus, that hilltop area was made part of the Verona wastewater management plant, which means that the sewage goes to them and they collect the revenue on it. Conversely, move up to uh, 2017, we started to negotiate and uh, no one wanted to take responsibility for the sanitary sewer line. Mm -hmm. Verona said it was in Cedar Grove. Cedar Grove said it's not our pipe. We don't own it. We don't maintain it. And it belongs to the <coughs> county. The county did not want it anymore. So what was negotiated is that we will do the maintenance on it, but they will pay Cedar Grove for every connection fee, which we were not entitled to because it's not ours. They will pay us the $12,000 per connection, sewer connection, for all 460 or 480 units. So the uh, water and sewer utility will realize somewhere in the vicinity close to $600,000 as a, as a benefit based on the negotiations. So you know, what seemed like a bad deal back then ended up coming back as a windfall for us at this point. Great. But Mr. Remmer is correct. The sewage will go to the Verona Sewage Treatment Plant. Yes. Right. Thank you, Mr. Tucci. Go ahead, Mr. Remmer. But we're, we're res under, under terms of this agreement, we're responsible for it. All, only the maintenance of the line. That's all. No, that that wasn't clear in the in the. In fact, it says they, they were going to get the approval for the sanitary sewers. It's going to be approved by October first. That's what it says here. Right. I don't know. Did they get the approval? Yes, they did. Yep. Okay, great. Uh, I think I've used up more than my fair share of time. I um, will uh, personally, I will uh, uh, re-examine the material here as it relates to the uh, benefits for Cedar Grove. <coughs> I, I heard the big numbers over 30 years. Uh, I, I won't be here for the next 30 years. Hopefully. You uh, the, um, but the, the information as provided is, uh, and I, I talked about the biggest one, the, the $6 million for demolition. Mm -hmm. That is just absolutely incorrect. Absolutely incorrect. Mr. Ember, thank you for coming down. It's been a while since you've been here. Thank Appreciate you. you coming down. Thank you. Okay. Um, anybody else from the public wishing to be heard? See, not I close that portion of the meeting. Is there a motion? No, you just. You got it. Okay, um, Mayor, I, I move for the adoption of pending ordinance number 17-816 to be published in the Verona Cedar Grove Times as a past ordinance to take effect as prescribed by law. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? A roll call, please. Councilman Cambiris? Yes. Councilwoman Peterson? Yes. Councilman Borgo? Yes. Deputy Mayor Sakala? Yes. Mayor Tanella? Yes. Item 4, award a bid to consider resolution concerning award a bid for removal of leaves. Be it resolved that the award a bid be made to Caputo Brothers Tree Service of Montclair for a two-year contract term for the cubic yard amount of $7. Is there a motion to approve? Motion. A second? Second. Uh, any discussion? Roll call, please. Councilman Camburis? Yes. Councilwoman Peterson? Yes. Councilman Vargo? Yes. Deputy Mayor Sakala? Yes. 
Mayor Tanella. Yes, the meeting is now open to residents of the township wishing to be heard on any item on the agenda. Is this a matter on the agenda? There's another public section uh, later in the meeting. Okay. Seeing none, I close that portion of the meeting. Uh, reports from township officials. Good evening again, Mr. Tucci. Good evening. Uh, just one item tonight, and this is more of a uh, humanitarian uh, issue more than anything else. As everyone is aware, uh, the people of Puerto Rico have been devastated. I mean, absolutely devastated. Their whole island is uh, demolished. Uh, the Essex County Prosecutor's Office, in conjunction with the uh, Hispanic Language Society of Essex County, is having a fun drive collecting goods, mainly medical supplies, senior-specific items, basic toiletries, flashlight, baby needs, food that's non-perishable, bottled water, and batteries. And uh, if you see downstairs, there's some items being collected. We're collecting them down here in Town Hall. Our police department is going to bring them down to the prosecutor's office. So anyone who's willing to donate, we, we'd encourage you to do so to help the uh, citizens of Puerto Rico, Commonwealth of this country, and uh, you're helping another human being on this earth get through a tragedy, which we've had many you know, throughout many areas. And again, the deadline is October 13th. So I would encourage everyone, please, whatever you can give, no matter how big or small, let's help these people out. Thank you, Mr. Tucci. That's all I have there. All right. Um, Ms. Stutz. Um, the only item I have, Mayor, is um, in the packet there's uh, the Municipal Clerk State Association has requested resolutions from municipalities to oppose the legislation that pertains to um, the Open Public Meetings Act and the um, OPRA law. Um, they're asking for it to be revised because it basically constitutes an un unfound unfunded mandate um, imposes on municipalities. Um, what's the council's pleasure with regard to this issue? Do we want to uh, discuss at our next staff meeting? What, what, what would we like to do? Is there a motion to approve it? Can we, can we discuss it in the next sure. meeting so we know exactly what what the both sides of the equation are? Hey, hey, uh, everybody in favor of doing it? Okay, Ms. Stutz, can you put this on the agenda for our next staff meeting? Will do. Anything else, Ms. Stutz? That's all at the moment. All right. Here. Gotcha. Mr. Zielinski, good evening. Good evening, Mayor. Uh, two things. Uh, number one, I'd like to have an executive session to discuss the COA litigation. And then I'd also ask that the governing body uh, remove item 8E, the execution of the developer redevelopment agreement with K. Hubnanian. Uh, we're still working on some details of that agreement with K. Hubnanian. I anticipate they'll be ready at the next public meeting. Great. Okay. That's it? That's it. Thanks, Mr. Zelensky. Um, township reports. I'll just start off. I only have a, one, one comment. Um, I know at our last staff meeting we talked about having some type of review of ordinances with regard to adding additional student liaisons. I know, Mr. Zelensky, you're going to look into that. Oh, we, we've amended it. It's on the agenda. I, I, I know that's for the um, that's for the Recreation okay. Advisory Board. We kind of wanted to do an overall, or maybe this is something for a staff, then our next staff meeting that we can we can have a discussion about okay. um, for other uh, committees and boards to see whether or not it's appropriate to have uh, a student liaison for each one of them and how we go about doing it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That's all I had. Um, Deputy Mayor? Uh, just a couple things. I uh, reached out to the, um, on behalf of the council, I reached out to the, the superintendent, Mr. Featherman, and I made him aware that we do have some uh, student uh, positions available on the cable TV committee. Um, we would like to get a couple of students in who would like to help out and, and, and work with the filming of our of our meetings. So I'm just making that announcement that um, that's going to be uh, addressed through the high school. Good. Um, but also, if anybody who's watching is uh, is interested, we're looking for uh, student representatives. <clears throat> I've also um, uh, let him know about the. Um, the library board um, scholarship for people who are interested, students who may be interested in library sciences, uh, and he's also going to pass that pass that on. Um, the only other question that I had for I had a question for Mr. Tucci about where we are with the ordinance regarding Devil Devil's Hole. Uh, 
We have a draft. That we have a draft ready for the next public meeting. Yeah. Okay. Very Great. Good. Thanks, good. Deputy Mayor. Uh, Ms. Peterson. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I just have a couple things. Sure. The Municipal Alliance, just I wanted everyone to be aware that there is a fall movie night at Morgan's Farm on October 21st. They're going to be showing uh, two movies and giving away um, trick-or-treat bags. It'll be a great family evening, and I encourage everyone to come out and bring your kids and see the movie. Um, and in terms of the Health Advisory Board, they are holding a flu clinic. Um, Wednesday, October 25th, uh, 9 to 10 at Town Hall. It's free to Medicare Part B and $20 for Medicare HMO or private insurance. So I also encourage everyone to please come out and get your flu shots. Great. Anything so else? J just one question. Sure. Did they discuss whether there was enough flu vaccine? Because I know some years they, they were very short on how many they had. They didn't. Okay. So I just want to know what the quantities are. Yeah, uh, that's not an issue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So, yeah, they didn't discuss that. Thanks, Councilman. Sure. Councilman Vargo. Good evening, Mr. Good Mayor. Good evening. Um, so I have a, a couple items, We most of which um, relate to our downtown advisory committee. Mm -hmm. uh, so as you know, we had a meeting, a uh, town hall style meeting for our downtown advisory committee on September 14th. We had about 40 residents, uh, 30 to 40 residents show up in person. Um, and we have um, over 1,400 views of the video that's been posted on the, the downtown page. Um, so I want to thank every, all of the residents for showing up, number one. I want to thank Jeff Bueller from the, um, the State Department of Community Affairs who assisted with that, and all of our committee members to, who helped provide a successful meeting. Um, a couple things that, that came out of that meeting was a survey uh, so we have recently circulated a survey um, on Facebook um, and other social media sites, and it will be on the Discover Cedar Grove website um, to try to get some feedback from the residents. Um, and uh, so we, we encourage and, and we hope that all, all of our residents will, um, will help us and participate in the survey. And if you see it, please try to share it so that way other residents see it. Um, the... One of the other items that um, came out of the meeting was we have um, some interested parties looking to donate to the Downtown Advisory Committee. So I know we've talked about this in the past about a dedication by Ryder since it is a, since the committee is um, a, a committee that was formed by ordinance. We just wanted to confirm that the dedication by Ryder was established and how we go about doing that. So maybe that's a question for Mr. Tucci. Well, um, uh, and, and I checked into that, that matter. Uh, the dedication by Ryder already exists because it was one created years ago for the old uh, downtown committee. Okay. So that account is already set up. If there are donations that need to come in, they can come in immediately and we'll go into that account. Okay. We're, Mr. Tucci, on that point, so resident wants to make a donation. They're writing that check out to? Township of Cedar Grove slash Downtown Advisory Committee. Okay. Because it has to, Township of Cedar Grove's name has to be on it. Okay. And what that is is a dedicated fund that can solely be used for that purpose and that purpose only. It doesn't get mixed up with general accounts. It's a separate account. So, and Mr. Vargo, probably makes sense to put something, some information on the website with regard to donations. Yes. Uh, and we have right. a lot of businesses looking to donate to the committee. Um, so, I guess for the, the tax ID and all that kind of information, mm -hmm. that's been asked quite a bit so far. So, and I just don't, I don't have the information. So, I'm assuming we can, we can talk. As long as the council authorizes it, I give it to you right away. Okay, Great. fantastic. Is there any way to make credit card donations? Are we set up to do that? Uh, we're not to that point yet for downtown advisory committee. Right. Actually, actually, we're moving right now from water and sort to general taxation. We're, right. We're doing it piecemeal. Okay. Uh, it, it seems to be working out very well, by the way, the first phase of this. Good. Okay. Good. Fantastic. No, no, fantastic. So um, so we'll get some more information on how to actually, the, mm -hmm. the process to donate. I can get so. you the tax ID number that they can. Fantastic. Um, the other question that I have is in the past we've talked about the crosswalk on uh, Bradford down by the, um, down by the new field, down by Panther Park. Yes. Um, and I see we have our, our county representative here, so perhaps that's a question that I can um, throw that way. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. When Ms. Hartwood comes up here, we'll ask her. Okay. Um, and then lastly, on a, on a more personal side, I want to give some recognition to Officer Christopher Heck. Um, on uh, September 18th at about 6 a.m., uh, he responded to the, um, to the gym that I attend, 6 a.m., responded very professionally, um, unbelievably quick. Um, and I can tell you that everybody that was around was um, uh, very, very happy with 
the level of support that he provided. Thank you, so. Mr. Margo. Good. Anything else? That is all. Not great. Uh, Mr. Canberras. Yes. Yep. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, just two questions for Mr. Tucci. Um, one, I, I just came up just now. Um, a year and a half ago, I made a suggestion about putting our meetings uh, on Bluetooth so that people that are sitting here who have problems with hearing and other things, they can tune their um, hearing aids to Bluetooth uh, for people who have disabilities. Uh, we mentioned that to uh, find out how much the cost was and then maybe we could do a grant because that's usually a disability uh, thing. Through you, Mayor? Sure, Mr. Tucci. It's ironic that you bring that issue up. Uh, Judge Brindisi just came to me. Uh, we're going to be purchasing specific equipment for the hearing impaired that if they come here, they're, they're able to put it on great. and it great. amplifies and it will be able to utilize. As far as the technology for Bluetooth, I know we just got to uh, YouTube and we're going to have to <laughs> check with our technical people mm -hmm. to see what uh, we would need to do. To, right, we, can, we can investigate that. But as far as the hearing impaired equipment, uh, it's going to be on order and it's going to be coming in shortly not only to be utilized here but also for the court when, when they so, need it so is the hearing impaired person is the hearing impaired um equipment different than the bluetooth you're talking about well there are two yes. separate items but they'll work in conjunction with each other you can okay. take a, a standard store-bought pair of headphones right that are bluetooth compatible and you could actually put it in there so even if you don't really have a hearing problem you could actually sit sit in the and audience and yes, you can listen, listen to it. Got actually it. the range is uh, pretty far you could actually go to the bathroom and actually listen to it is that something we're looking into as well too we're, Mr. We're, we're purchasing it that's oh that's part of what the judge brandisi was just looking came for into me great last okay week and asked about it that Actually, the uh, AOC is requiring each court to have that, make sure Makes they sense. have that equipment right. available. So he so said, you know, can we purchase so it? I said, it's if it's required, we have to purchase it. It's not a, not a question. Okay. Oh, okay. Good. All right. That was just luck there. Um, one other we question. should play to pick it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one other question is, our scheduled flood board meeting is for the 12th of uh, October uh, here in Cedar Grove. The flood board is requesting an October 5th discussionary meeting about uh, what we plan on doing, uh, you know, about removing from the flood board. So they asked if it would be okay uh, if they the meeting is hosted here in Cedar Grove. I have to ask permission first. We have to check with the clerk just to schedule to make sure that the room is not is available. That's okay. It's either either conference room or uh -huh. oh, this area is fine. It's because there's only a small amount. Yeah. Okay. That should be a problem. Just call tomorrow. We'll confirm that the room is available. Okay. Not a problem. That's it. Thank Anything you. else? Okay. That's Thank you. Thank you. All right, moving on to the consent agenda. Um, item A, to consider a resolution concerning appointment of member to CATV committee. Be it resolved that Andrew Fisner is appointed as a member to the CA CATV committee. Is there a motion to approve? A motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Yes, I just want to commend yeah. Andrew. He's a, he's a great addition. He's very knowledgeable. I'm very happy he's here. I concur with that, uh, Mr. Tucci. I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, is this his uh, second or third meeting? I'm not even sure. Probably third. Third? Yeah, I re we appreciate him volunteering and taking his time. Um, I know that spot's been open for a while, and he's been doing a great job, and I want to thank him for his time. Uh -huh. um, any other discussion? Uh, roll call, please. Councilman Camburis? Yes. Councilwoman Peterson? Yes. Councilman Vorigo? Yes. Deputy Mayor Sakala? Yes. Mayor Tanella. Yes, item 7B, to consider resolution concerning appointment of student members to the Recreation Advisory Board. Mayor, there's one correction on this resolution. The terms are staggered. Um, Chamberlain Rico's um, expiration is actually um, the current uh, spot that is open student member that was mm -hmm. vacated which expires 12 31 18 and then the second appointment would expire december 31st 2019. why, why do we do that i, I feel we we're changing the two of them are just gonna are they they're both sophomores correct but, right but right. they're three year they're three year terms right it's, it's the term of expiration runs concurrent with december not right. with the year that the student is graduating so in 2018 when his term comes up for renewal you right. would renew him for another three-year term I was under the impression he was gonna have three the two of them were three-year terms that's what we were doing why not that's, that's not the way the terms run but it was only it was only I'm sorry so th there was only one term now we're modifying it to add a student and I thought the the consensus of the council was <coughs> add two students 
same term and let them r let them run together. Is that, is that not what I thought? That's so I'm not sure. I'm not sure why there's a discrepancy between the two terms. The student member term right. previously was always a three-year term. Right. It was vacated when the student graduated. Okay. So, so one of the terms expiration is in December of 2018. Mm -hmm. And then the new term that the additional right. student member that you're adding would be for three years that would expire the following year. Can we just massage them so they're equal, so it's not confusing? Can we, can we do that? I, I just thought we were going to have them the same. You're amending the ordinance anyway. Just change it so it's so they're the same. So when we, we so the next council that comes in here, you got two students to look at in three years from now, as opposed to one in two years, and you know it's just. That's the, well, I guess, the whole why we went through that process. Well, I mean, I think the issue is, though, you're, you're filling one unexpired term. Right. So when that term expires, you then would reappoint the person or if somebody else wants to do it, you put them in. I mean, the preference is usually to stagger terms on boards. I know, but we, I, we, we didn't want to do that here. I mean, I just, I don't, I'm speaking for myself. I, I, liked, I, I wanted to see two three-year terms can just starting from now and ending in three years. And that's why we went through the interview process and we you know, we did what we did. At least that's what my opinion was. I don't know what the rest of the council has an opinion on that or what they what they want to do. Anybody else have an opinion on that, it? That makes sense to me. I mean, doing it that way, if it's possible, <coughs> right, if it's possible. is the best way to do it, I think. <coughs> right. Is that possible to do? Well, you would have to, for the one filling the unexpired term, you'd have to extend it beyond three years because they're filling an unexpired term. Right. Oh, you have to make his term longer, which yeah. we're not looking to do. Right. Got it. Or reappoint him. Right. When the term okay. I mean, I'm not, listen, I'm not looking to complicate it. The end it. result just, is the same. I'm sorry? Basically, <laughs> that those two students will be graduating at, in the same year. And then at that point in time, when they graduate, that council at that time will appoint two students for three-year terms. No, no. no. For unexpired to, terms. For Chamberlain's unexpired term. Right. Yeah. Because it's easier to reset. But but right. Can't we just reset it and, and is there a way you can massage the ordinance or whatever? Because we're, we're doing it now. We're amending it anyway. I don't know if you can massage it. It can be corrected, but we'll okay. have to do something with the unexpired term. All right. Um, I used the wrong term. Massage. That may. No, I mean, we may have to end the term now. I'll have to take a look at it. Yeah, why don't we do that? Okay, if, you, if you have ever, no objection, you just want to pull it now and we'll d handle it at our staff meeting? Just and that makes sense. Yes. Just want to do it? I, and yeah. you may come back, Mr. Polinsky, and say, this is what you're saying tonight, but if, we'll just take a look at it, if you don't mind. And, and also, Ms. Stutz, the resolution reads cable TV committee. It's got to be. Oh, thank you. To, um, That's what happens when you try it. Thank you. RAB. Good pickup. Okay. All right, so we're going to pull that agenda item off. Um, Moving on to item seven, uh, 8C, to consider, consider introduction of pending ordinance 17818, repealing chapter 29 of the Township Code entitled Flood Control Board Regional. Uh, Mayor, I move introduction of pending ordinance number 17818 to be published in what full in the Grove. I'm sorry? What happened to 812? Are we skipping A and B? What did I do? Restricted vehicles and traffic. I'm sorry. You know what? I got confused with the A and B. I'm sorry. My bad. Sorry. Let's go back up. Sorry about that. What? Do a reset. Is that what it is? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, right? All right. Let's uh, eight them. Uh, new business uh, under eight. A, to consider introduction of pending ordinance 17812, amending chapter 251 of the township code entitled vehicles and traffic. Mayor, I move for the introduction of pending ordinance number 17-812 to be published in full in the Verona Cedar Grove Times as a pending ordinance with a public hearing scheduled for October 16, 2017. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Okay, just a quick discussion on this one. This is a handicapped parking space on Bowden Road for a specific individual, not a general handicapped space, which means it's just for the person in front of that house it has their placard number on it, and only they can park in the space. It's a lot different than just the general handicapped space where anyone with a handicapped placard can go park here. So I just wanted to differentiate that for the council. Thank you, Mr. Tucci. Any other discussion? 
Roll call, please. Councilman Camburas? Yes. Councilwoman Peterson? Yes. Councilman Vargo? Yes. Deputy Mayor Sakala? Yes. Mayor Tanella? Yes. Item 8B, to consider introduction of pending ordinance 17817, amending chapters 259 and 217 of the Township Code, entitled Water and Sewer, respectively. Mayor, I move for introduction of pending ordinance 17-817 to be published in full in the Verona Cedar Grove Times as pending ordinance with a public hearing scheduled for October 16, 2017. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councilman Camburas? Yes. Councilwoman Peterson? Yes. Councilman Vargo? Yes. Deputy Mayor Sakala? Yes. Mayor Tanella? Yes. Item 8C. To consider introduction of pending ordinance 17818, repealing Chapter 29 of the Township Code, entitled Flood Control Board Regional. Mayor, I move uh, introduction of pending ordinance 17818 to be published in full in the Verona Cedar Grove Times as a pending ordinance with a public hearing scheduled for October 16, 2017. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? A roll call, please. Councilman Camburas? Abstain. Councilwoman Peterson? Yes. Councilman Vargo? Yes. Deputy Mayor Sakala? Yes. Mayor Tanella? Yes. Item 8D to consider introduction of pending ordinance uh, 17. Oh, we're going to pull this one, right? No, eight. Mm -hmm. We're pulling A, not D. We're not pulling D. It's recreational. Yes. We're amending it, aren't we? He's going to look at it. That's yeah, I thought that's what the discussion yeah, was. Yeah, we got to pull D. I think the mayor's correct. So, we're, yeah, we're yeah. pulling D as well. All right, sorry about that. We're going to pull 7B, I guess, and 8D together. Okay. And 8A. I'm sorry? And 8D, exactly, right. All right, moving on to 8F. To consider resolution concerning best practice checklist. Be it resolved that the best practices inventory has been reviewed by the Township Council. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? A roll call, please. Councilman Camburas? Yes. Councilwoman Peterson? Yes. Councilman Vargo? Yes. Deputy Mayor Sakala? Yes. Mayor Tanella? Yes. I, uh, item number 8G to consider resolution concerning submission execution of 2018 NJTOT grant application agreement. Be it resolved that the mayor and clerk are hereby authorized to sign the grant the grant agreement on behalf of the township for the submission of the NJDOT grant agreement for improvements to Harper Terrace. Is there a motion to approve? Motion. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Yes. I believe, Mayor, that there was some inquiry about when we were going to do Harper Terrace. Right. We normally uh, apply for an NJDOT local aid grant every year. We've done Commerce Road, we're doing Upper Cedar Street, we've done a number of streets, so Bowden Road is going to get done. So we thought Harper Terrace would be a great candidate uh, it's by the school. And there have been some uh, complaints from residents about the condition of the roadway. It falls in with our roadway inventory checklist. So uh, we're recommending that this application be submitted to the state, and hopefully by next year we'll have the project underway. Great. Thank you, Mr. Tucci. Um, roll call, please. Councilman Camburas? Yes. Councilwoman Peterson? Yes. Councilman Vargo? Yes. Deputy Mayor Sakala? Yes. Mayor Tanella? Yes. Uh, item 9, approval of bills. Be it resolved that the summary of bills, having been duly audited and found correct, are hereby ordered paid in the amount of $83,122.90. One of the smallest bills. Yeah, I, you're not kidding. Motion <laughs> <laughs> to approve. Is there a second? Second. Uh, any discussion? Roll call, please. Councilman Camburas? Yes. Councilwoman Peterson? Yes. Councilman Vargo? Yes. Deputy Mayor Sakala? Yes. Mayor Tanella? Yes. Uh, item Cap 10. Councilman Vargo was laughing at me as I was saying that. Was he saying yes? Because <laughs> yes, I was going to ask. I was going to point it out. <laughs> uh, the meeting is now open to residents of the township wishing to be heard on any item on or off the agenda uh, concerning township business. Good evening, Ms. Hartwig. Good evening, Kate Hartwig, uh, liaison from the County of Essex. Uh, it's good to be here tonight. Good to have you. Everybody's well. Um, we have two events coming up that are very close by, up on Fairview Avenue here in Cedar Grove. On Saturday, October 7th, uh, Essex County residents are encouraged to come and uh, we'll have a household hazardous waste collection day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. 
Um, there are flyers down in the town hall that list the items that are approved uh, to be brought to the event and those that are not accepted. And then two weeks later on Saturday, October 21st from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. in the same location uh, on Fairview Avenue in Cedar Grove, um, they will be recycling computer and electronics. Um, and the only items not accepted at that event are um, smoke detectors and carbon monoxide alarms. Um, and there is no commercial or large quantities uh, accepted. Items. Those those flyers are on the county's website too. They are they're right. They are here county. in town hall. Some, there's some in my office. There's okay. Some downstairs. Good. So they're distributed. I believe they're yeah. up on our website also. It's always a great annual event at the county hall. It's, it's good. There's also message boards up on Fairview Avenue if you're actually driving in that sure. direction to remind people. And I believe on also. our recycling flyer they're noted also. There. Good. Um, the council also had a question um, yes. regarding the crosswalk. Uh, I believe the last discussion I had with the Department of Public Works was that the township engineer um, would need to reach out to the county engineer to discuss that project. Um, I can provide that information to Mr. Tucci, but I do believe he already has that. Mrs. Tucci, so you'll just, can you check with our engineer and see if that happens? Um, okay. Maybe we have to, okay. Anything else, Ms. Hartwick? Okay. Thank you. Thank you again for coming. I have a question. Yes, sure. Kate, uh, last uh, meeting I mentioned about the wellhead. Did you get an update on it? Um, I reached out, but I will need more information in order to actually follow up on that request, I like the location specifically. But I can give you my email if you want to send me okay. that information. Because I asked a few people, and they weren't totally familiar with the request. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? Yes, come on. Just state your name and your address, please. Good evening. Chris Jennings, 100 West Lindsley Road. Uh, my wife, Andre, and our neighbors from Dogwood Court are here as well. Uh, to just bring to your attention, if you don't already know of the uh, impending issue that uh, causes much heartache over in our West Lindsley Road of the intersection of West Lindsley Mountain and Pompton Avenue. Uh, at any uh, given time, this intersection could be a 15 to 20 minute delay just getting off our own block mm -hmm. uh, as a cut through for for pompton um you know it's uh, it's not uncommon literally for a hundred cars to be lined up i live on 100 which is in the middle of the road and uh, from time to time the cars are back past my home and so uh, you know as active community members we are in and out of the house often and it becomes uh, very difficult right. to get kids to practice to dance to a meeting um Two summers ago, I spent the better part of July trying to work on this and communicating with Cedar Grove Police, understanding then that it was a county road and a state road uh, being directed to the New Jersey Department of Transportation, to the county of Essex. Um, and I don't know if it was a placebo, but it seemed to get better for a short time. Uh, and our neighborhood was, was appreciative of those efforts. Uh, but that has uh, come and gone. It, it really has. Uh, <coughs> gotten worse uh, incrementally and it is just uh, very burdensome for us in that neighborhood um, what I w would say is that you know when we are encountered with that oftentimes we have to go the opposite direction down to Main Street down to Pompton up over cutting through neighborhoods uh, and you know that's to save you know two or three minutes uh, if there are 10 or 15 cars there it could take you five to ten minutes to get off um, the you know the issue in my opinion I'm not a, a, a civil engineer by any stretch is the fact that you know the merge from West Lindsley into Mountain right. and the people from Mountain are now backed up themselves and not very eager to let anybody merge in down to the uh, the light at um, and West Lindsley and if the first car or the second car is trying to make a left and they're not from the neighborhood and they don't know that you have to get out in the middle of that intersection to let the car behind you go straight or make a right you could sit there and have one or two cars be able to get through at that light um, and so it, it becomes really difficult uh, we've we've called the police in times to say like you know it's 20 minutes and we can't get off and and from time to time they come and sometimes uh they don't uh but it's um it's an issue um you know i certainly have solutions again not being an engineer uh but uh I, I, what i believe is that if the the light at pompton and uh and mountain traveling 
east was a delayed green for us, for that direction to go. There's a delayed green already traveling south on Pompton Avenue. And so if there's a way for those cars to have, you know, 30 seconds to, to let some cars go before the cars traveling on East Lindsley are coming across, because as soon as they do that, nobody, nobody can get by. Right. Um, and so it's, it's, it's problematic. And so we're here this evening, again, with just a few neighbors, but I can assure you this is a neighborhood problem, and we could bring the neighborhood if, if, if you'd like. Yeah. Um, and so what we're looking for is because of the complexity of having a county road, and a state road, all merging together, we're really looking for your leadership to, to take the lead and to reach out to those entities that need to be notified and something has to be done. It's, we're late for, you know, we make amends, but we leave 15 minutes before, 15 minutes we should for school, for practices. Uh, and again, if, if sometimes I, I don't come home from work, if I know I have to go back for a meeting, because it, it could right. take me 20 minutes just to get off the block. Yeah. So I appreciate your consideration. Yep. And uh, I'm not sure the next step or, or who I need to contact or if I can leave that in your able hands, but uh, I do appreciate your concern. So first, Mr. Jennings, I want to thank you for coming down and, and your wife and your neighbors. I'm very familiar with that intersection. I've sat in that traffic myself. I got a picture from tonight, uh, if you'd like. I, I, got a, I, right, I got a picture in my mind because I've sat in there and I've actually sat in that traffic and done that turnaround and, and gone back out the other way many a time. So I'm really, I'm, I'm familiar with it. Um, and, you know, it's unfortunate. Um, that you had to come down here tonight to um, um, see if we can address it. Mr. Tucci, I'm looking at you to see what, what can we do here as a council to, to address them, um, their concern with regard to that intersection? Well, to be quite honest with you, I think you've already started the process right. unknowingly. Uh, when Route 23 was planned to be repaved from Verona all the way up to uh, the Wayne border, there were a number of uh, intersections that were discussed with DOT. As a matter of fact, the meeting was held right here mm -hmm. in this room. We had the township of Wayne, Verona, Little Falls, and Cedar Grove here. And we went through intersection by intersection, and me meaning the township engineering departments, the township police departments of each group. Cedar Grove has the biggest portion, obviously. Right. Uh, and as part of this project, each of the intersections was supposed to be improved. In particular, our traffic safety officer, Lieutenant Pumphrey, brought up the West Lindsley intersection as being the most problematic after Bradford in 23, which had the most accidents out of anywhere in Cedar Grove. Uh, unfortunately, when the design came back, uh, West Lindsley was eliminated because they indicated they did not have enough money. Well, we were very upset with that. We had uh, a call into the commissioner's office and uh, what we're told now is that they're expanding the project. There's going to be a phase two, and that West Lindsley is the priority design. Now, I'm going to put a caveat to that. They meaning the state. State of New Jersey. Right. Because it's a state right of way. The state right of way extends from Pompton Avenue, normally about 150 feet back off the roadway. So, what they're looking to do is they're probably going to widen that intersection and put a left turn lane going eastbound from West Lindsley onto Pompton, right. which will allow the flow of traffic coming from Mountain in the left, go, people going straight and going right will be able to flow, flow through, and the people on the left, as long as the stacking is not too great, will be able to wait in staging area to make the left-hand turn. That's what Lieutenant Pumphrey has recommended to the state, but we're waiting to see what they come back with, because a lot of times, and they promise us a lot of things, right. until we actually see it, but we're told that phase two is on the drawing table right now, and that is priority one. And we'll see, we'll see what happens. And this resident is absolutely correct. I've waited in that, in that particular spot on West Lindsley, making the left to, to try to, on West Lindsley trying to make the left where a mountain merges. Just trying to get through there is tough. And our neighbors in North Cole, uh, they're very good people, but sometimes they're, they're not real congenial as you can far tell as letting, not letting behind you. a local because they're just a little too right. hesitant right <laughs> yeah. mr tucci what's the time so phase so i guess phase one and phase two the phase one time phase frame. one's going on right now that's right, what as, you see that's right all under construction. the construction going on you see uh right now there's private companies there's smith sandy who's mm -hmm. doing the roadway there's electrical companies doing the uh 
the uh, light poles. As a matter of fact, they're going to be putting the uh, generator connections in at all the light poles also. Right. That's going on right now. That work is taking place. Uh, phase two, I don't know when it's going to come off the desk and hopefully that there's funding for it. I believe that they wouldn't have started it if they didn't have the funding. So I, I think that's a go. But again, until I see the final plan and what exactly is entailed, as long as they went along with Lieutenant Pumphrey's recommendations, I think we'll be fine. But if we want, the resident can leave his information. And when we get the information back, we can right. at least feed it to him, even though it's not our jurisdiction. And, it, you know, we really don't have too much to say. But all we can do is put pressure on them to, to get it done. Would it also help for us to reach out or even the residents reach out to our local uh, state representatives state as well, our, too? Our, our, uh, state Sem senator and right. our, our assembly people. So we can do that. We can, we can talk offline and we can figure something out to put you in touch, touch with the right person there and... I mean, the squeaky wheel gets the oil in my always works. So let's see if we can help you out. We appreciate okay. that. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Anybody else wishing to be heard? Okay. Um, what do we got here? Um, whereas Section E of the Open Public Meeting Act permits the exclusion of the public from a meeting of the mayor and council in certain circumstances, and whereas the mayor and council of the township of Cedar Grove are of the opinion that such circumstances exist, now therefore be it resolved by the mayor and council of the township of Cedar Grove, County of Essex, State of New Jersey, that the public shall be excluded from discussion of any action on the executive session of the meeting of the mayor and council of October 2nd, 2017. The general nature of the subject matter to be discussed is uh, co-litigation. It is anticipated at this time that the above stated subject matter will be made public as soon thereafter as it is deemed in the public interest to do so. This resolution shall take effect immediately. Is there a motion? Motion. Is there a second? Uh, any discussion? Roll call, please. Councilman Cabiras? Yes. Councilwoman Peterson? Yes. Councilman Vargo? Yes. Deputy Mayor Sakala? Yes. Mayor Canella? Yes. Is there a motion for adjournment? All, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you.